In this Double One Game Creative Video Tutorial series, we will be looking at the many different types of resources that make up your games, providing a step-by-step -step breakdown on what each of them does, and how they can be used to bring your games to life. In this first part, we will be going over sprites, providing an overview of the sprite editor itself, as well as learning how to create static and animated sprites. Sprites are the most versatile way of getting images into your game. Whether you're working on a map or an interface, you will likely use sprites to represent different parts of your game. Another method of getting images into your games is through tile sets. These are separate from sprites, as they're confined to a grid and can only be placed on maps. They're also not as versatile or customizable as sprites, but the trade off is that they're more performance efficient. We'll be covering tile sets in a later video tutorial, so for now, let's look at creating a sprite. There are multiple ways to set up a sprite, so just having it be static, animated, or as a particle effect, which we'll be covering in the next part. Sprites can be 2D or 3D, but for this video tutorial, we'll be sticking to 2D. To begin, open the sprite editor by clicking on the sprites button on the main toolbar. To the left of the window, you'll see a tree view list, which shows you all of the sprites that are in your project. These sprites will be different depending on which template you're using. For the purposes of this video tutorial series, we'll be using the Action RPG template like we did with the basic series. Directly above this list is a set of buttons which can be used to add, remove, manage, and export your sprites. Before we create a new sprite, let's briefly go over each of the sections of the sprite editor. Select the male body sprite from the actor's body folder to see all of its properties. In the top left, you can set the sprite's name and its category, which is used to group sprites of a similar type together, whilst also defining the layers of a character actor which typically has separate sprites for its body, clothing, etc. You can create entirely new categories by typing a custom name into the drop-down menu. You can also set the sprite's face graphic, which is an image that will appear whenever the advanced message box event is used, as well as enable options to keep the sprite in active memory. Specify whether the graphic will rotate automatically with its direction, with the option to set individual sprite directions if desired, and specify whether its collision box will rotate automatically with its direction. The body properties section is where you set the sprite's default color, as well as specify which actor templates can use this sprite, and which accessory sprites this body sprite can use. Naturally, the body properties section will only appear for body sprites. If you select a sprite of a different category, like the Afro M hair sprite, for example, you'll notice that this section changes to accessories properties instead. As previously mentioned, a sprite's category is used to define the layers of a character actor, such as its hair, shirt, pants, shoes, etc. These are all collectively referred to as accessory sprites. It's here where you can specify whether the accessory sprite will share its default color with its associated body sprite. If another sprite category can be paired with this sprite, such as in this example, where hat sprites can be used alongside hair sprites, and which body sprites this accessory sprite is attached to. The poses section, directly underneath, is where you can add up to eight directional sprite animations to predefined or custom actions. Walking is for when an actor is moving. Slashing is for when an actor attacks with a melee weapon. Shooting, throwing, and casting are similar, except they're for when an actor uses a ranged weapon, thrown weapon, or magic, respectively. Wielding firearm is for when an actor is holding a firearm and walking. Wielding melee and wielding other are similar, except they're for when an actor is holding a melee weapon or item respectively whilst walking. Idle is for when an actor is standing still. Jumping and falling is for when an actor is accelerating up and down the Z axis respectively. Hurting is for when an actor is damaged. Dying is for when an actor is defeated or destroyed. And parachuting is when an actor is forcefully ejected from a vehicle. As mentioned earlier, you also have the option to add custom poses. You can then use the start stop custom pose and play custom pose events to play said poses in game. The graphics section is where you add new sprite animations for the selected pose and direction. You can create multiple sprite animations and layer them on top of each other, like with the male body sprite and how the arms are a separate animation. You can use the options underneath to adjust the number of animation frames, the rate at which frames play at, and what the animation should do once it reaches the end. Loop will repeat the animation continuously. Once will stop the animation after playing one time. And Oscillate will play the animation in reverse once it reaches the end. 
you can also specify a unique name for each animation layer. Set its render priority, which determines whether it should appear on top or behind other animations and sprites. And specify up to eight unique color layers for animations in a sprite. For example, if this value was set to two, it would allow you to independently color the body and arm animation layers inside the actor window. The render priority is useful when combating Z fighting, which is an issue that can occur if two sprites are on the same layer and are overlapping each other, resulting in distortion or rendering glitches. You can also set how far shadows are rendered from the sprite, change how the sprite will be lit, and adjust how the sprite will be rendered, such as smooth scaling, which will apply anti-aliasing to the sprite's edges. You can move your mouse cursor over these options to get a description of what each of them does. To the right of the window is the sequence editor, which not only provides a preview of what the sprite will look like in game, but also allows you to set up a sprite's collision box and holding points. You can also use the sequence editor to create keyframed animations that smoothly transition between frames. We'll be going over the sequence editor in a little more detail later on in this video tutorial, so for now, let's move on to creating a new sprite. The most basic type of sprite you can create is a static sprite, which is a sprite that isn't animated. You'll use these extensively in your games for things like hood and interface elements and map and scenery objects. So let's create one. To begin, click on the Add Resource button in the top left of the sprite editor. This will open the Pick Sprite Template window, which allows you to create a sprite that's pre configured based on the template chosen. For now, simply select None and press OK. Then give your new sprite an appropriate name. We're going to be creating a barrel sprite, so we'll simply call it Barrel. Next, click the Add Animation button to the right to insert a new animation layer. A drop down menu will appear with options for inserting blank images, image files stored on your computer, an image strip, also commonly known as a sprite sheet, a 3D model or master segment, or pasting a graphic stored in the clipboard. If you're a capable artist, you can insert a single blank frame and then use the built in graphic editor to draw a barrel graphic. However, for the sake of this video tutorial, we're going to make things easier for ourselves by repurposing the Wood Barrel with Metal Supports object found inside the Containers Lower Object tileset. If you're not sure how to do this, simply open the tilesets editor, select the two tiles that make up the barrel object, then right click it and select Copy from the drop down menu. Then return to the sprite editor, click on the plus icon for the animation layer we created earlier, and select Paste Graphic. Finally, set the shadow distance to zero. Before we can start using this sprite, we'll first want to ensure that its orientation and collision box are set up correctly. This will ensure that not only will it look right in game, but that the player won't be able to walk through it as if it weren't there. This is where the sequence editor comes in. To open the sequence editor, simply click inside the preview window or press the sequence and collision button directly above it. The default node rotation of plus Y is appropriate for games using a 45 degree camera view like the Action RPG template, so we don't need to change this. Most styles of game will typically use plus Y, such as platformers that use a front-facing camera view, or games with isometric or 3D graphics. However, there are some game types, like top-down games for example, that require a different rotation axis, plus Z in this case. By clicking on the tabs at the top, you can see how your sprite will appear with different camera views. Before we move on, make sure the Z node position is set to 32 so that it isn't clipping through the ground. You can use the front camera view to more easily see if your sprite is clipping through the ground. The slightly thicker horizontal line in the center represents the floor, so if the sprite is below this line, it'll end up clipping through it. The collision box also appears to be a little too small to fully encompass the barrel graphic. To fix this, click on one of the collision box's handles to resize the collision box so that the entire graphic is inside of it. You can click and hold the middle mouse button to pan around the sequence editor and use a scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out to make this easier. You can also select the collision box from the list to the left and modify its node position and node magnification values directly for even greater precision. And there you have it. You've just created a static sprite. You can now use this sprite in your game by placing it as a dynamic object on your map. To do this, open one of your maps and then select the actor tool from the map toolbar. Then click anywhere on your map to place it. 
Select the Dynamic Object Actor Template, and then select the Barrow Sprite for the actor's body. Now that we've covered how to create a static sprite, let's turn it into an animated one. You can do this one of two ways. You can either add additional frames of animation to your sprite to create what is known as a stop frame animation, whereby every frame of animation is unique, or you can use the sequence editor to create a keyframed animation, whereby the computer automatically fills in the frames between two key points, also commonly referred to as tweening. We'll be covering stop frame animation in a later video tutorial, so for now, let's take a look at a keyframed animation using the sequence editor. We're going to be animating the lid of the barrel so that it opens when the player interacts with it. First, copy and paste the animation layer we've already created by right clicking it and selecting copy, and then right clicking and selecting paste. To avoid any unnecessary confusion, let's rename each of these animation layers so that we can tell them apart. Name the first animation layer barrel and the second animation layer lid. Next, right click the barrel graphic for the lid animation layer and select edit to open the built in graphic editor. Select the eraser to the left and carefully paint over the barrel so that only the lid remains. Once finished, save the graphic and close the graphic editor. Now do the same for the barrel animation layer, except this time, select the color black and use the pencil tool to carefully paint over the lid to create the illusion that the lid has been removed. Then save your changes once again and close the graphic editor. While the preview in the bottom right may look the same, we now have two separate animation layers that we can manipulate in the sequence editor. Before that though, we first need to tell 001 Game Creator how many frames we want and what speed they should run at. Set the pose rate to 0.25 and the pose length to 2. If you receive a warning message asking if you're sure you want to change the length of the sequence, simply click continue. Then change the sequence mode from loop to once and open the sequence editor. Ensure that the 45 degree camera view tab is selected and then click on the lid animation layer to the left and change its node rotation from plus Y to plus Z so that it sits atop the standing barrel. You'll notice that it's clipping into the body of the barrel, but this is an easy fix. Set the Y node position to 32 and the Z node position to 48. Then drag the slider at the bottom to the right so that we're editing the second frame and select the lid animation layer again. Set the X node position to 3, the Z node position to 56 and change the Z rotation slightly so that the lid appears skewed. Since we don't want the player to be able to clip through the lid, resize the collision box so that it fully encompasses the barrel graphic. And that's it. You can preview the animation by clicking on the preview once button at the top. Since we intended this animated sprite to be used as the container for an item, let's see what that looks like. With the map selected, click on the item pickup tool from the map toolbar and select an area on your map to place it. Then click on the treasure chest button and double click the barrel sprite. Then set an appropriate reward item and click OK to place the barrel on your map. To test the barrel in game, select the play map icon on the map toolbar and select an area near your barrel. Then press OK on the testing options window that pops up. Once in game, approach the barrel and press the action key, the enter key by default, to open the barrel and see the animation play out. This concludes the first part of our video tutorial series detailing the different types of resources used in Double One Game Creator. In the next part, we'll be continuing our look at sprites, learning how to create body and clothing sprites, as well as particle effects.